I'll let it seize. Let's crack it, C's. What's good? It's good in the hood, everybody. Yo, what's up, Richie? I see you. Don't forget to hit the like button coming through the door. You know the rules. Gotta hit the like button coming through the door. Before we get this session started. I gotta tell you what little C's. Gather round, I got a story to tell. Doom, 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 doom. Oh. Doom, 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 doom. Oh. Be careful driving, always. Always, Diamond Loop. Don't forget my cash app is Carcino. K-A-R-C-E-N-O. I'm just giving people time enough to get through the door. Yes, sir. Stay blessed and all that mess. You watching Skip and Shannon? I got it on record, as always. Yeah, I got to get those lights up. <laughs> Yes, your boy Cino's always winning. Always winning. Now, let's talk about it. So, since Liz, Liz C's went and made that post, C's must have bumped his head. And the reason I say that, hey, what's up? Nicholas Jacobs made a live stream that wasn't at the end? Oh my goodness. He said, Lil C's cousin must be in here because somebody hit the thumbs down button as soon as we started. <laughs> no, C's feeling that pressure because people were watching that and there was other people that hit him up in the chat and they DMing him. He was in there banning people left and right, <laughs> getting mad at people, you know, and What are they doing? So he told him like big was like big pub made him go to Cali and made him go to the uh to the show. Little C he's talking about we ain't never hung out nowhere. And Big was like, you know, let's go to this club because you know we ain't we ain't really hung out at all. Saying echoing the same thing that Diddy said. Now if Diddy didn't say this. Would C's have been saying it? Absolutely not. Yeah, I know some weirdness start happening. Hit that like button. Get them likes up. So they can know that real people are watching this.
Now, why I say he was feeling the pressure, because X put that out there and sent that to him. He responded back to X, and he told X, he was like, you won there. So, I'm going to address this. Now, this ain't verbatim, because I ain't got it in front of me. But basically, what he told X was that <coughs> he told X, like, you weren't there. Once again, you weren't there. And Biggie did not want to go to London. And that's on Big. He going to stack that on Big that Big did not want to go to London. Like, Big did not want to go to London. And that's on Big. And he going to put that in, like, numbers and everything else, put parentheses in there. Like, he really stood on it. Why you ain't say that was on Big about going to the club? That Biggie really wanted to go to the club. Say that's on Big. See, you can put it on him, but you ain't gonna be able to put <laughs> I met you. And I told you how I met you. Here in Chicago, 96. So I already know what kind of guy you are. You are what they call a hanger on, a minion. You to get the bags guy. You to go run at the stove guy. That's you. Jay Z got Tata. Biggie has seeds. I wouldn't say Big was broke because Big had all this money lined up coming in, so he was far from it. Was he liquid rich? Probably not as much as people would think, but he had just sold uh, Little Kim and uh, Little Junior Mafia to Puffy and Bad Boy. He sold his end and he basically dissolved the record label he had with Un when they had Un Diaz. Oh, Jay Griffin. Who am I kidding? You, you mean you're kidding yourself. So keep going with the lies you keep telling yourself. See, here's here's the truth about it. Puffy is the reason that they wanted to go to Cali to promote the album. True. That's naturally what you do. But Little C said it even in the video that they were in clubs getting ice grilled. So if you was in clubs the whole time while y'all was down there getting ice grilled and everything else, like, man, we was getting ice grilled everywhere we went. So why you keep talking about y'all ain't hang out nowhere? That's one. Two. Biggie did not want to go to London, but he was obligated to go to London. So you told a half truth. You knew what he meant by that. He would have rather went to London than go to that party. He didn't feel like going to the party. Puff convinced him to go to the club. Because Biggie initially said he didn't want to go. You know that. You was right there. Biggie was saying how he didn't want to go. He didn't want to go. Puff hit him with that. Oh, come on, Big. It's going to be big, man. We got the single coming out. We got a lot of everybody going to be there, man. We got to pay. We got to let you know the king is back. We got to play. Puff really wanted to get out there and go to this party for the promo. You know, his job. Nothing wrong with that at all. He just had a very lax mentality when it came to the threat matrix. 
he didn't take it as seriously as he should have. That's Puffy's mistake that he has to live with. He ain't no we, it's he. He made a very bad decision that he's got to live with for the rest of his life. I don't know nothing about no sacrifice. He was not sacrificing Biggie. Okay, you're not going to sacrifice your hugest <laughs> asset to your label. Remember, he let Craig Mack go. Craig Mack is the one that jumped the label off because he came out before Big. And he was the hottest thing going for the label. Then Biggie came. But Craig Mack had it jumping first. Everybody gonna make more money dead than, than alive. You can kill any rapper right now and they'll make more money dead than alive. You can take any entertainer wipe them out they're going to be making more money dead than alive so it's, it don't mean anything biggie wanted out that's a lie biggie was not leaving puffy that is a lie was not what he was doing was going to establish his own label and artists, but they're going to be under the bad boy banner. He was bringing talent in that he was going to sign and manage. The commission was going to be his own thing on and make his new label. The same way they had Machiavelli Records under Death Row, same thing here Biggie was going to do with the commission. He was going to make his own imprint. Just like he had Undiaz, he already had a record label that was successful. Biggie had a label with Un. They had Undiaz. So him and Un put out the Junior Mafia album. Puffy turned down Junior Mafia. He tried to bring Junior Mafia up, and Puffy wasn't interested in doing anything with Junior Mafia. And was actually against Big actually rapping with him at first. And trying to limit what you know what he could do with it and all this stuff until, until Junior Mafia got hot. And they made Lil' Kim a star. And then they tried to act like she was bad boy. Like they were bad boy when they wasn't. They weren't signed to bad boy at all. He brought in little Kim, he brought in little C's. They were gonna be signed to Bad Boy. Kim got her own imprint and signed Little C's to her imprint. So C's was signed through him, through her label. She got her own imprint when she was with Bad Boy. Okay? Junior Mafia rights and everything was sold over to Puff. But without Big, he ain't want no C's. So little Kim put out Caesar's album. She promoted all that. Don't you remember play around? You don't wanna play around. You don't wanna play around with me. Oh no! I can you. These are facts, people. Facts. Hit the like button for hearing real facts. Later today, you're gonna to see another factual video that was a lot of that went past a lot of people's heads that I heard in that A and E thing. That was another lie for no reason. I'm just like, my goodness! Don't forget to support the Cash App, man. Support the page, Carcino, the name on the Cash App, K A R C E N O.
people imagination is something Where am I fat? <laughs> I'm fat. Boy, you didn't heard a rude joke. <laughs> nah, this thing ain't got no three likes. It's so wrong. You gotta refresh your page. <laughs> the likes are coming in. Hit those like buttons. And don't forget, if y'all new, subscribe to the page, hit that notification bell, and select all so you can get all your notifications. They're only going to send you about three, but... <laughs> so don't think you're, like, you're going to have a flood of all notifications. You're just doing that, hopingly you get one. <laughs> no, my thing is, that's what I'm saying, it's like... It's unnecessary for you to even tell the lie. That's what blows my mind. It's like they lie for no reason. It's like no reason for it. Completely null and void, no reason for it. And they turn around and do it anyway. I mean to sit there and I didn't like that at all because he dumped it he dumped it on Biggie because Biggie ain't here you know it's like dump it on him I'm a look people been telling me why that happened and we'll go down that road a little later but C's was wrong for that and he know he wrong for it that's why he responded to X that way Xavier he, he responded to you that way because he know, he know what you meant. You just worded it wrong. If you worded it exact, he couldn't wiggle his way around it. He, he hit you with a half truth. That's why I said you ain't said right. You should have said, you know Puff didn't want you to go to the club that night, not Cali. And you should have said, Biggie was obligated to go to London and was supposed to go to London. He didn't want to go to London, but it was his obligation to go, to do the promo for the album. So, he didn't want to go to London, but he got to go to London. It's part of the job. I'm just saying, C's now feeling the pressure because other fans saw it and they, they start going in on him on the DM and on his page, on his uh, Instagram page. So if I, I'm not the, it's not like I'm the only one, me and Gene Dill just want to go out to C's or something like that. I just thought that was some slimy stuff. I thought Pope was slimy for saying it and, and C's co-signing it just proved my point. I'm like, he just proved my point by cosigning. His cosign just made it worse. His cosign meant, okay, I get it now. Yeah, I, I saw Gene's video and a lot of things he said, I said. And I'm like, yep, you're right. And he said some other stuff that I didn't see. That went over my head. It was just so many lies. I'm like, yeah, that's right. That's right. So yeah, Gene's video was on point. But I wouldn't say Big was broke. I wouldn't say that. Well, they said, was Pac broke? Pac wasn't broke. He just wasn't liquid. He had about... It depends on what you mean by broke. I always tell people that. I said, well, it always depends on what you mean by broke. 
You said somebody so and so was broke. What you mean by that? the truth behind the finances of Tupac. Tupac was somebody who lived, as soon as the cash come in, it goes right out, hot pocket. So, what people don't seem to grasp or understand about that is that Tupac realized he was not being paid the what he was supposed to be paid. So him and Suge worked it out in the office when he wanted to see the finances and it wasn't being provided. Okay, there you go. So, they did it in a way they were avoiding taxes, which basically they were defrauding the tax system. So the majority of his money, he wanted Suge to get his mom a new house which they did, which she didn't own. It wasn't in her name. It wasn't even in Tupac's name. They didn't even own that house. Tupac's house that he was paying for, he didn't own that. None of the cars was in Tupac's name. He didn't own those. So for tax reasons, it's saving him money, but a lot of his finances were being used to pay for a lot of other things in the company. And he wanted to see a breakdown of finances. And the lawyer was like, that's gonna take time. We're working on it. So Pac is the type of, type of human being. He wants things done right away. He don't wanna wait around for information. He wants it right away. David Kenner was not providing this for him. So Tupac wrote a legal letter. I mean, professional legal letter, firing him for representing him. He told Sugar about it. He told everybody else. So he fired David Kenner. That's why everyone believes, oh, man, he was going to expose them and bring them up and for taxes. And he wanted his... They ended up providing it. Because once he died, they had to provide that information anyway. They had to get the assets in order to, you know, see what was going on. So they finally presented all of the um, assets on what was going on and all his finances. And he was paying basically Nate Dogg's child support. He was paying for <laughs> like all kind of stuff he was paying for. And they people was like, oh my goodness, this is a mess. But it showed like he he was basically working off debt. We 
because he thought all the stuff that he was being given was like Suge giving it to him. Suge wasn't giving it to him. You gonna have to pay for it. That's all coming out of what you finna earn. And then he didn't even earn, I mean, own it. So that's why he came out with Machiavelli. The name Tupac, he was gonna have to pay Interscope and Death Row. The name Machiavelli, he owns all publishing rights to Machiavelli. So he's recording under a new name, which is Machiavelli, not Tupac. So, the Machiavelli album on the Machiavelli records, he got his imprint through Def Jam. They gave it to him. This is why Snoop became very jealous of Tupac because Snoop couldn't get that, but Tupac could. And Snoop's like, I built this record label. You know, like, I'm me and Dre, we built this thing, and now you just bypass me. And I can't get my publishing, but he can. And he just got here, you know. So he was jealous of that situation. So when everybody starts running off like, see, no, I told Snoopy he was jealous of Pac. And he didn't want Pac there. That's not true. You got to say it in the right context. And the right context was he was okay with Tupac coming there. He had no problems with Tupac until he started seeing the treatment that Tupac was getting over him. He wanted his own imprint with Doggy Style Records and all this and wanted to do all that, but he couldn't get it. He signed away his publishing, but he had a trial. I mean, you, you had trials that was worth millions of dollars. You know, this was different. You was going, you was going to be gone for life. And what did they do? They bailed him out. They helped him out. They said, you know what? We got you. <coughs> so Snoop wanted his publishing, but he could never get it. So he changed his name when he left. He no longer was Snoop. Doggy Dog, he had to change his name to Snoop Dog. And Death Row kept, every time Snoop dropped an album, they would release like a greatest hits or some unreleased songs by Snoop to try to mess up his record sales. And they'll drop it at the same time. And it'd be like Snoop Doggy Dog. 